So, in the first part of this actual video series, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually create the installation media for Gentoo. The software we're going to be using is Belena Etcher. I already have this downloaded, so I'm not going to bother going through the download process. However, when you download it, you will be presented with either this or this, depending on which one you downloaded. I have the actual program installed using this right here. This actually installs it to the hard drive. This right here makes it so it uses only the files in the local directory. You'll also note that I have two ISOs right here. I should probably delete this one because it's old. That was from last year. And the way, the way you get Belena Etcher is you simply hit this download button. I don't know if it's going to give you the portable version or the install version, but if you want to be sure, I think it gives you the install version if you click here or the portable version if you click the down arrow then click here or here. As you can see, they have a version for Mac OS and a version for Linux if you happen to have the app image infrastructure in place on your Linux distribution. That's all I'm going to go through for that for now. We've got to move on to the actual Gentoo Linux page right here, www.gentoo.org. You could just type gentoo.org and that'll work just fine. Here, you have to hit Get Gentoo. And here, you are presented with a couple of different options for installation media. And in fact, I should probably go here to the Get Started page. We're going to pull up the Gentoo handbook right here, specifically the AMD64 one, and go to choosing the right installation medium. Now, it tells you that there is a minimal installation CD and an occasional Gentoo live DVD. Now this thing says live GUI USB image this is actually an ISO image, more specifically, it's this ISO image right here. I'm going to delete this too. Now, we have the minimal installation CD right here, which you can burn to a CD or a DVD, or if you really want to waste money, you can burn it to a Blu-ray, I suppose. And this will drop you into a minimal text-based environment. But the one I'm actually going to be using is this live GUI USB image because it is easier using this to illustrate what I am actually going to be doing. Also, I already have it downloaded. So there's that also. Now. Once Belena Etcher is installed, you'll be presented, when you open the program that is, you will be presented with a page like this right here. It will most likely ask you for some Microsoft UAC stuff, just as confirmation, because this is actually going to wipe whatever drive you install it to. So, I have a 32 gigabyte SanDisk flash drive. It is a USB 3.0 flash drive. As you can hear, I've just plugged it in. Now, we want to hit flash from file. 
And then we select the ISO that we just downloaded. Whether you downloaded the minimal install or the live GUI install, just select the file and hit open. After this, it will ask you to select a target. In this case, like I said, it's a SanDisk USB 3.0 drive. It says USB 3.2 Gen 1, but that technically means USB 3.0. These USB naming schemes are getting weirder and weirder by the year. So we select this drive right here, and then we hit flash. And it'll come up with another UAC prompt. There we go. And it is currently flashing the drive. While it's doing that, I suppose it would be wise for me to go over a little bit about the Gentoo handbook. This is what you will use when you are installing Gentoo Linux for the very first time, and likely a number of times after that. Honestly, they change the installation procedure every so often, so you have to make sure that you're doing the installation the way they're telling you to. In any case, we'll get into the actual installation process when I get the system booted up. But what I want to go through right now is just this section right here about the Gentoo Linux installation. Now it tells you how the installation is structured. It tells you installation options and potential troubles. Now, back to the choosing the installation medium. If all you have is a CD drive, you can go ahead with the minimal CD. If you have a DVD drive or a USB, you should probably go with the live DVD just to make things easier on you. Because if you have the minimal installation CD, as I've said, all you will be given is a textual environment and you'll have to use a textual web browser as well to access this right here. And honestly, accessing this in textual format is not fun in the least. Let's go back to about the installation. And like it says, this is a 10 step process, but that's not necessarily important to the entire procedure. What is important to the entire procedure is all of these different chapters right here. It has about the installation, choosing the media, configuring the network, preparing disks, installing stage three, base system, kernel system, installing tools, configuring the bootloader, and finalizing. We'll be going over these when I actually get to the installation process, when I actually get into the graphical environment, which this live DVD, excuse me, live GUI USB is going to be providing. I should state that it does say something about the installing stage three right here. We'll kind of get to that when we get to that, but if you noticed, we have a number of different options here for stage three. We've got OpenRC, System D, Desktop Profile OpenRC, Desktop Profile System D. Don't mind all those uh, sounds that's going on. That's just as a result of the etcher actually finalizing its procedure. And additionally, down here, we have more options for Stage 3. 
and even more advanced options. But these are the ones you are most likely going to be wanting. That's why they're front loaded. Now, let's pull up Etcher and see what it's complaining about. It says flash completed. One successful target. Effective speed 22 point. I can't tell if that's a 6 or an 8. It looks like a 6. Anyways, we can close this out now since the USB drive is done flashing. And let us pull this up right here. You will notice the USB drive has turned into three USB drives. There are three different partitions of this particular USB drive. Just right click on the first one, click eject, and you'll note all three of those partitions are gone. You can now safely remove the USB drive from your system, and when you are ready, put it into the target system, and you can go there. We'll be taking care of that in the next segment.